Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where we talk about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Dark Winds. A great series premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, this is my first introduction to the story because I had only just found out. I never knew, um, even beforehand, that these uh, this show was actually based on a long series of novels. The, uh, what is it, uh, Liphorn and... Chi uh, books based around uh, Joe and Jim. That's their last na- respective last names. There's a long series of books uh, based around their adventures, and I th- it's interesting because Bernadette's in this. I was just reading like because the author who wrote these books passed away in like 2008, and his daughter, I believe, is the one who's continued subsequently, and she's become a mainstay in the books. So I'm wondering are they taking elements from later books? folding it in, because I guess Bernadette's always been there, but maybe she's never been a big, big part of the investigation, so maybe they're taking later elements of the books and making her more, maybe maybe she's a lot more on the investigation side of things in later books, in the books that the author's daughter took over. I, I don't know. Once again, I'm, I'm, I'm coming into this not, that was just a little bit I, you know, read up precursor to uh, watching it, but... Nevertheless, uh, we start off with that heist at the beginning, which was kind of pretty brazen. Uh, fact is, that took place in broad daylight. I was actually kind of shocked by that. Uh, at first, with the cop leading him back there, I was like, no, oh, that's weird. That guy's acting, oh, okay, he's in on the job. So, they end up getting away on a helicopter, and then you see them flying overhead, getting away. And there's the guy who ends up dying later on. He sees them. So, I was like... Because I thought that was fascinating because they ultimately end up killing him. They uh, tracked him down to that hotel. They cut out his eyes and apparently his liver. And I thought it was interesting what uh, Joe basically says that for the novel, it's like they don't, um, it's not a, a situation of, it's not real witchcraft that's at play here. It's someone making it seem like witchcraft because if witchcraft is involved, uh, their people won't talk about it. So even if there are witnesses, even if there are people who know about it, you don't talk about, you don't mention anything related to witchcraft, nor do you na- na- uh, say the name of the victims. Because the moment Joe entered, he put th- those marks on his uh, face. And I was like, I wonder if that's supposed to be like a, a spiritual thing of like a kind of a, a barrier to make it so that when you enter a crime scene where there are dead bodies, you don't get the, the spirits or kind of that negative energy doesn't tack onto you. I wonder if that's what that's supposed to be. That That's immediately what I think of kind of like how salt is used to keep out spirits. I mean, I don't know if that's across all, um, things that get used but I mean I know I know that just because of the show Supernatural so I'm wondering is it kind of a similar thing in that regard is it supposed to represent kind of a similar thing the fact is we didn't see Anna at first I was almost thinking like okay maybe she got away she's a witness and hopefully uh Joe will be able to track her down because I thought she was there because someone could have easily gotten out the window because it did seem like there was noises but it could have just been I guess maybe any wind or uh whatever that might have been active like making noise uh, maybe the killer escaped through the window, or maybe there was another witness that we're just not aware of. But I was almost thinking, like, okay, maybe she got out of there. And for him to find her body, I was like, damn, that's sus. Because I was thinking she might be the living witness. Granted, it could, the story could have always been, yes, yeah, she got away, but then she stays hidden. She's trying to hide away. And then eventually the killers do find her and kill her regardless. Like, you know, it's a, a race to see if Joe can get to her beforehand. But uh, ultimately, the killer would still get to her ahead of time. I think that'd be... That's where I thought we might be heading. I didn't imagine they'd immediately be like, nope, uh, they killed her too. Her gra- And it turns out the, the lady uh, trying to heal the guy. Because I was wondering, uh, and I kind of get this answer later on, which I thought was interesting. My immediate, immediate thought was, okay, the guy saw the plane. Uh, he says basically a week, not plane, the helicopter. A week after seeing it, he got sick. So he's like, yeah, I've been getting, I've been worse and worse for the past two weeks. So he went to that hotel. So he went to that place to get uh, Anna's grandmother to heal her, or, um, him. But sadly, he ended up getting murdered beforehand. And it's also interesting too because it's unclear what Anna's cause of death was. It's like there's no injection part, so it wasn't drugs, like because you know. But it, you know, maybe they could have injected her or something and killed her. But it didn't seem like there was any marks on her body. So it's like how she died, we don't know. 
we super know how the other guy died. He once again, that's pretty brutal. Once again, the eyes and the um, liver. But my my point was, I figured that helicopter had something to do with it. That's why when he was like, "Oh, I got sick after seeing," it, I was like, "Oh, was there something leaking from the helicopter that dropped down onto it and it made him sick?" I was I was wondering if that was the case. It's not. We find out, you know, jumping ahead at the end of the episode, the plane is crashed into the water. Like either it was a, an argument while they were in flight, or I, I would assume like maybe they killed the pilot and then jumped out. Like I will, I don't know if they had parachutes or something more. Maybe it was just an argument. The a helicopter crashed and a, one of the people died and the others got out. But it's probably been leaking like the gasoline or whatever or whatever from the helicopter has been leaking into the water. Because when Joe goes there later, he touches the water and he was like, he was smelling it. Kind of like, oh, is there something poisonous in it? And then he, I guess he can smell the gasoline in it. So that's why the guy was sick because he's been like, because that was his property. He had been drinking like. Uh, once again, it could have been not just necessarily gasoline. It could have been other, I mean, even probably oil from the helicopter too. Like it could have been a combination of it uh, made him sick. So that's the, the connection there because he was also a uh, part of like the whole uh, thing for his healing. He needed a totem. And later on when uh, Jim shows up, he references, oh, the totem's gone. So why, why would that be a de big deal? So part of me wonders, did that guy find shades related like because the shades that he brought the totems was that something he found that is from the bank robbers it was something of theirs because even jim was like because the whole question was like why would they take it because it couldn't have been something of value because they didn't left any cash behind they also didn't take any jewelry or anything from anna so it had to be something tied to them specifically is what they've thrown out there so i'm assuming maybe he found some glasses or whatever related to them and he used it in his, in his and i would have assumed like for it to be something of that nature kind of like a totem you would think it would have to be something significant for you i would think it would have to be something personal but maybe it doesn't have to be maybe it just has to be a particular item that you know the energies can kind of get you know drawn through or thrown to whatever the case may be i thought that was interesting um other than that, um, we get a little introduction. We don't get the full story of, it seems like Jim is a little bit, not Jim, uh, Joe is a little on the outs with certain parts of the uh, tribe. I don't know whether they have beef with him because he, because I was about to say like, no, they can't be they have an issue with him being tribal police, can it? I don't, I don't know. It could be that thing because the sad thing is you being part of the tribal police, like, you don't have as much say and, you know, doesn't have as much power and sway outside of the, I think, the reservation. And even probably within the reservation, it's a thing, of, as we can tell, because of the murder, the state of uh, everything, the murders and everything, it becomes an FBI thing. And, like, they kind of, like, tribal police lose all power and it becomes a jurisdiction situation of the FBI takes control, which the lead FBI agent is played by uh, Noah Emmerich, which AMC-wise, he was to see, uh, he was to CDC do. Dude from The Walking Dead, the first season, who also, spoilers, made a reappearance in uh, the final episode, actually, you know, the post-credits of uh, The War uh, Walking Dead World Beyond, he uh, reprised that role, but I want to say the most recent thing he's probably been in was The Americans, which I think is kind of interesting, just because this is a period piece show. The books were written in the 70s, so I'm wondering, is that why they're written in the 70s, why the show takes, or maybe just... I guess for the nature of these stories being told because they are a time capsule that maybe they were written in the 70s, so that's why the story itself has to be taken. Because some stuff can be written far back, but then you can modernize it to some extent, but maybe to kind of keep the true nature of how these stories operate, it has to coincide with the time. And I think it's also very important for the sake of the story too, the time frame, just because of um, America's relationship with um, indigenous people. Like, I think that's, I mean, I think that element still reigns today, but I feel like that time, any, I think that adds layers to it. And I think that that's, those are probably important elements to the stories of the books. And so you need it to be in that time frame to portray the story in the regard of like, once again, what America, in particular white people's real and, um, uh, indigenous people, like what that relationship was and how complicated it was, because it seems like, um, Joe's wife is a nurse and she works at a hospital and the doctor was like right you need to uh, and I was actually kind of surprised I was like 
once again, just maybe in my own head, I was like, oh, I'm surprised this, uh, doc, this white doctor seems like he's pretty okay. Like, oh, I mean, I was like, oh, the way he's treating the, uh, the, the pregnant woman, I was like, oh. For what, I was like, for whatever reason, my head thought that was going to be an issue. But Emma was like, right, he's telling you to uh, not have a home birth to have the baby here. But then Emma adds to him, and luckily he, he doesn't... Uh, understand what they're saying but emma's warning her that if you have your baby here he's going to basically make it so that you can't have babies anymore i was like all oh, right that was a fucking thing wasn't it like it's one of those things like it's one of those history things i'm like i vaguely remember that like because that scratched some part of my brain of like that sounded familiar i was like because i think that might not just be a is that i don't think that's just an indigenous people thing i think maybe it happened to black people too i don't know my history is not my strongest suit because it's like because it's one of those things like when you learn in history you like some of that stuff gets grazed over not on purpose but it's just like there's so much to cover history wise i mean i mean once again i've talked about it there's stuff in history like once again if it wasn't for Watchmen, i wouldn't know about um the uh tulsa massacres like that once again that's something i only learned about what 2018 2019 no that was like 2019 when the watchman the tv show came out so it's like it's one of those things of like there's just so much terrible shit in history you just don't know about but like i said i think this is something i feel like i vaguely have a memory of like learning about that like making it so like but i'm curious what the reasoning behind it is and i don't want anyone to misinterpret like oh like saying like they were justified in doing what they're doing like i'm wondering what their justification why they think like oh us doing this terrible thing isn't terrible i'm curious what their thought process behind why they believed it wasn't the inhumane terrible shitty thing to do but um I think that's kind of an interesting thing that Emma's, I think Emma's there to work this job because it is probably like a decent enough job, but it's also for her way to make sure that she's able to speak for those who kind of can't speak for themselves and also make sure that they know what's what and what's going to happen. You know, so once again, I think it plays into that, right? The story taking place within the time frame, you know, that being the period that it is in, but regardless. But circling back, like I was saying, uh, I, I skewed away from it. But uh, Joe seemed. I, I, I was. Cu I'm curious to find out what it is about Joe because Anna's dad got super upset when he's like, "Oh, this is another one." Which part of me wonders is it in reference to what I'm assuming, and I could be wrong. It seems like it might be Joe and Emma's son, who Anna like, because later on he uh, he asked Anna's mom, "He's like, oh, like has, was she dating him?" He's like, "Not until." And then Joe just kind of nods his head, "Right, I understand." And he saw the picture of Anna with a boy. And why, why Anna hit so hard? Because I guess she was almost like a daughter to him. Because she was dating potentially him and Emma's son maybe. And maybe he died. Because he said it like, oh, another one. So it seems like maybe they feel like there was a death that happened and Joe didn't do enough. Once again, your tribal beliefs. But that me is like, what does that badge even mean? That you don't handle things. You don't even solve things. I, I don't know. Like, I don't know what that's in correlation to, but I'm wondering if all that has something to do with why the others kind of frown upon him, in, in particular Anna's dad. I thought it was an interesting introduction to Jim as well. Kind of a dick move that he's driving by. He sees that family out back and he's just like, uh, that they're stuck, their car's messed up, and he just kept going. And as he's driving away, he's kind of smiling. So I don't know whether it's because he himself, because he's originally from there, uh, but he hasn't been back for a long time. It's been nine years. Because after his mom died, he left. He apparently went off to college. He went to Berkeley, apparently. And now he came back. He was very cagey about why exactly he came back. But we find out later on, uh, Noah Emmerich's his character brought sent him to there. Because he's secretly an FBI agent. But um, he sent there to investigate the bank robbery. And so, because it is on the reservation is where the cop helicopter went, the FBI doesn't have jurisdiction there, so they can't really investigate however they want to, but if he can get uh, someone on the inside to find evidence, it can means that the FBI can force a joint operation, which I'm sure Joe doesn't like that, because it's like, he even says it to him, like, right. We'll pretend, I'll pretend your bank robbers are Navajo if you pretend that, um, 
my victims are white and we'll see who actually does their job faster, you know? So it's like, right, you don't care about a murder because he was making it seem like it was kind of all in the same. He's not necessarily connecting the dots because the murders don't mean anything to him, but he's just saying that enough because he wants to investigate the bank robbery. And even uh, Joe was like, right, we have a saying. It's basically white people's problem. Like, it sound, it's yeah, it's white people's problem, not ours. It's like whatever happened there, even if it translates over here. But it's, it, the problem is he suggests that the robbers are Navajo. Which I'm wondering, because aren't cause I think the one that was a, dressed as a cop was white, wasn't he? I think. It could be mistaken. Uh, he might be the one that's actually dead in a helicopter. The other two might have been... The ones that were covered up, they might be uh, from there. And so they killed him because it's like, right, we're not going to help. You know, you maybe he wanted a larger cut or maybe it's just kind of like, yeah, we're doing our thing. But, we're you know, you were a means to an end, white man. So we're done with you type of shit. We'll see. Because I thought it was going to be an interesting dynamic for Joe and Jim. Because Joe seems like he's kind of on the outskirts to some extent. But then you also have Jim who has kind of slipped away. You know, he's like, right, he hasn't, he's lost a little bit of the language. And so he's kind of almost an outsider in his own regards because of that. Because, I mean, to be fair, in this episode, we didn't see him interact much. So we don't know, like, how much is still there, how much is lost. But he's also even more of an outsider because he's secretly an FBI agent that's implanted here. And I even love uh, Noah Emmerich's character being like, right, re remember what tribe you belong to. But I think in the end, he's going to choose uh, helping out his community but it's like it's also that disconnect of like right um, and I'm sure that's going to be an important part of that conversation for the character too is right you've been in you you know that that the, you know outside of the reservation you'll think like oh they'll treat you like one of them but you'll never be one of them you'll always just be Oh, you're that Native American FBI agent. It's kind of like, right, no matter where you go, it's always going to be a thing of, you know, and I think it could be a commentary on present day too, but I think especially in this time frame, your skin and where you come from will always come first and foremost. So, for example, like using me, for example, it's like, right, no matter, like if I were for whatever, whatever situ in this situation to be like, oh, you might be an FBI agent or whatever, but you will always be that black FBI agent. It will always be that asterisk beside it, and I think that's going to be a, a hard lesson that Jim, a hard reality that's going to smack Jim in the face this season, I think. That's how I'm going to take And that's what I think is really going to test, over the course of the season, is going to be testing his loyalties behind. Because he does seem interested, like, oh, like, you know, they're investigating the murders, but it, uh, no, Emmerich's Imer character, what is it, um, uh, as um, Joe's character calls him, was it High Pockets, has no interest in the murders. It's just about, because it's about like, right, we catch these bank robbers and we can punch our own ticket. We can write our own tickets to kind of decide where we want to go to in, in our careers. So that's what that's about first and foremost. So I think that's going to definitely be a diff uh, an interesting uh, dynamic, especially with you know him under Joe's wing and eventually maybe working with Joe shifts his personality the way he looks at things. We'll see. Because Emma, uh, the patient she was looking after earlier, uh, she gave Joe, you know, the address and he had Bernadette and, well, Bernadette and Jim looked into it and that family was a little odd because I don't know if that was like the mom or the grandma or whatever. And it's like, right, is your, uh, is the baby daddy here? And it's like, no, he doesn't live here. He just stops by, but she has bruises on her arms, which is what Emma noticed immediately. So what's going on in that household? And luckily Jim didn't open up that shack because if he did, God, it would have gotten potentially like maybe a shotgun or rifle shot straight to the face. But I'm wondering like that whole situation might be correlated and connected to the robberies. I don't know if that's one and one in the same or is that a different storyline in its own right. But the lady that was there like did a thing with uh, Bernadette and she was kind of almost like, what the? I don't know if that lady's kind of a witch herself. Because Jim said that when he was talking to one of the guys, the guy was like, oh, that damn witch. That witch is killing her. I guess in reference to... I didn't know. If, I think that was referencing that family. That woman in particular, she was making maybe Anna's mom sick and it's like, right, because she's, you know, I don't know if that's what he was referencing. He was saying like that damn witch is making her sick. So maybe there's some correlation to maybe specifically the pregnant girl and maybe her, once again, if that was her mom or her grandmother. 
I, I don't know what that's all about. And the fact that she was looking at Bernadette and she like kind of like said something slick being like, oh, walk pretty or something like that. And the moment Bernadette left, like she did a whole thing. I think she was kind of pushing away like any bad juju that the lady might have left with her. And she told Jim, "Is like right. Sometimes bring your keep your med your medicine with you because the med keep your medicine back with you because me your medicine sometimes out here could be your better could be a better ally than your own gun. So that's why I, I talked about it during my watch list. I don't think this show is necessarily going to go down the supernatural right, but a route. But I think it's 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 a part of this culture, and so it's a thing that there everyone in it is weary of and aware of. And I think it's going to play like a ritualistic culture um, point of view, but I don't think it'll be fully fully tapped into the the supernatural element because I think maybe that also plays into the robbers potentially being. Uh, from the reservation is because they would know like cutting someone's eyes out and their um, liver making it seem like witchcraft that no one would talk. They, they would, you'd have to be from the, uh, the Navajo tribe to know something like that, you know? So I think that kind of proves that maybe they are from it. Plus they came to the reservation and no one's said anything about anyone outside of that being here. To be fair, even Joe says we have maybe on our best day, 50 cops to like covered all of this and even suggested kind of going back to that uh that, that the car of people that jim left behind is you might you need to always keep a jug of water with you because it can be hours upon hours before someone stops by like especially a cop because you're just so understaffed even to the point uh as he calls them low pocket the other um fbi agent um he was almost like oh why are you keeping these bodies in an ice box and you almost have joe being like looking like are you stupid because they don't have i think the resources that like the fbi would have of a full-blown morgue it's like we don't have those resources we're pretty like s scraping by as we can you know they don't have the the limitless resources so they kind of have to make do with what so they had to make essentially a makeshift morgue at the back of a, a what seems to be like a convenience store of sorts so I thought it was an interesting line from the guy Lester, too, where he was talking about, like, oh, yeah, this is some stuff. Like, basically, it was almost like some stuff that will guard against, like, the supernatural. And he's like, oh, you really believe this? I was like, yeah, you live on the reservation enough, you'll start to believe what other people believe. Because he basically talks about how the mind is a powerful thing. Like, the mind is such a, that once the mind starts believing something, it, 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 that is the same thing as it being true. So, I just thought that was kind of an interesting element to it. But I thought this was a really nice start. Just from, like I said, from what I saw in the trailer, I really, you know, I'm always down for kind of a, you know, a murder mystery, but like a, just a, you know, detective mystery story anyway. But um, I, I think this was a really nice start. Uh, kind of get you thrown into the muck a little bit, kind of uh, getting you to know some of the characters, some of the some of the circumstances without giving you full context for everything. But uh, I, I'm interested to see... Uh, where this investigation, as well as these characters, where they end up taking us uh, going forward with this uh, investigation. But really, that's all I want to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, low light to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.